If you're currently thinking about implementing an A-B testing solution on your website, however, you have a few concerns or questions because your website is built using a modern framework, something like JavaScript, React, or a single page application, and you're not too sure if your stack and that tool will play nicely together, then this is a must watch video for you. Now, as a quick spoiler, it's definitely possible to do A-B testing on any framework. However, there's a few key things that you need to make sure that your A-B testing tool can manage. There's also a few setup things that you need to know. So carry on watching to learn everything you need to know with modern web applications for A-B testing. Okay, so I'm going to kick things off addressing one of the first big concerns people might have with doing A-B testing within an SPA, React, Next.js, SSR, SSG, Vue, Angular, basically a JavaScript-based website. And that is, can I add someone into an experiment for bucketing? Now, on the screen, I've got a traditional website. It's my website, johndjones.com. I built it about 15 years ago, so it's never used React. But hopefully you can see that when I'm clicking around, in the top here, you can see that the page is actually reloading in the tab. And this is because every single time a page request is made, a request is made back to the server, the server returns the HTML, then the optimizely snippet will load, and then the experimentation data is gonna be returned to the page, and then our experiment's gonna be run. Simple. Now, this architecture is fundamentally very different to how most modern JavaScript applications work, because nowadays, instead of making a request back to the server each time a page changes, instead, the application has the majority of the code in the browser to figure out what to do next. And when it comes to A-B testing, most people think, how do I still bucket someone into an experiment if I'm not making that request back to the server? Now let's say that you want to run an A-B test, but you only want to run the A-B test when this little dialogue pops up on screen. Now in that example, we basically want to bucket someone into an experiment when something's changed on the page rather than when the URL is changed in the browser. And this is a key thing to understand when picking an A-B testing tool because you need to make sure that it supports both traditional ways of bucketing people into an experiment and modern ways of being able to add people into experiments when things change on the page. Now to show this in action, I'm going to be looking at a tool called Optimizely Web. So now we're going to jump into that tool and I'll show you how to set up this experiment over there. So in order to set up this A-B test, the first thing you need to do is log into the Optimizely UI. After doing that successfully, you're going to get access to this experiments tab. And then in order to set up a new test from this big button here, you can pick from the different type of algorithms that Optimizely supports. Now, when setting up a test, the first thing that you need to do is actually decide how you're going to bucket someone into an experiment. So you can give your test a name and then underneath you can see that we can bucket someone into an experiment via a URL. Now, obviously URL isn't really going to work for a single page application or react because as i showed you in that last example sometimes you might want to bucket someone into an experiment when say a pop-up appears also in an spa sometimes the url might not change within the browser itself so we can't really use this in spa mode and that's the reason why you need to use a page template so within optimizely you can create page templates from this implementation tab from here you can see we've got this create new page I call them templates, but in Optimizely definition, it's called a page. And the first thing we can do when setting up a page here is give your template a name. So this template is going to be the name that you use within Optimizely. The next thing you need to do is give it an editor URL. And again, this is the page that you're going to be using inside of Optimizely. Now, the next thing you have to do within these templates is actually set up the targeting rules. So this bottom bit, decides how you're going to add someone into an experiment. Now, when it comes to deciding how someone should be added into an A-B test bucketing, there's basically two things you need to consider, and they are triggers and conditions. So the trigger is going to determine when are we going to check if someone should be added into an A-B test or not, and the condition can be thought of as rules. So what conditions or rules need to be met in order to add them? Now, when it comes to triggers, then if you're using a traditional website like my one, then the mode you'll probably use is the immediately mode. And this means that when your web page loads and the optimizely snippet loads, then we're going to check if someone should be added into an experiment. 
Now, as we looked at in the Hertz example, then when you're using JavaScript or React or an SPA, then this won't cut the mustard. And that's the reason why we have these different options within this dropdown here. So the first option we have for SPAs and React are when the URL changes. So this rule means that when the optimized snippet loads, and then whenever the URL within the browser changes at all, we're going to check if someone should be added into an experiment. Now, the second mode is when the DOM changes. So this means that when the optimized snippet is loaded, and then whenever any element changes on the page, then we're going to check for it. And in that Hertz example we looked at, if we wanted to bucket someone into an experiment when that pop-up loaded, then this is probably the best one to go for. Now, underneath here, we've also got the ability to target someone or add someone into an experiment when a callback is made. We've also got the possibility of adding a JavaScript condition. So let's say that you wanted to check the data layer for something. We could do it that way. And then we've also got the ability to manually add stuff in on the page. So that covered the five ways that you can bucket someone into an experiment with Optimizely. But the key takeaway is that if you're picking an A-B testing tool, you need those types of options Otherwise, it won't work. And what will happen is that either your developers will have to write a bunch of code in order to get someone bucketed into an experiment correctly, or you're either not going to bucket people correctly, which is going to impact your data, which means that you won't be able to trust if your A-B tests are winners or losers, and you won't be getting the best out of your A-B testing platform. So that is a really important point. Now, aside from triggers, the next thing we need to look at are rules. And this is deciding how we're actually going to add someone into an experiment when that triggering criteria has been met. Now, when it comes to determining these rules, there's three main techniques that you can use and you can do a mix and match or a combination. And this can be as simple, as complicated as you need it. So the first condition I'm going to talk about is the CSS selector. And let's say in that Hertz example, we wanted to add someone into an experiment when a pop up appeared. This is probably the approach that I would use. So going back to my React app, we've got this simple to do list. And when the application starts, the page starts, this is empty. And what happens is these get added a fraction of a second after the page is loaded. So mapping this back to our rule quickly, if I inspect this note here, you can see it's got a class of goal item. And this is the reason why we've been bucketed into the experiment. You can see the proof here is because this goal item exists on the page and it's combined with the second rule that I set up. Now, the second thing we can do to create a rule is to determine a URL. And you can see here, we've got this URL matches optimizely dynamic selector. And you can see this is the URL in the page right here. Now, when it comes to defining a URL match, we've got a bunch of different options. So in here, you can add in multiple different URLs if you want to. Also, if you want to be a bit more clever about your URL targeting, you can either match on a simple match we can match on an exact match. We can do a substring or a regular expression match. So these are typically useful if you want to target multiple pages with a single URL. Now, the final condition that we can create is a JavaScript condition. So again, if you're techie and you want to target things in the data layer or stuff on the page or in a cookie, we can add those in. And underneath, you can see that these can then be chained. So we can add in multiple different CSS selector and JavaScript conditions. And this can be as complicated or simple as it needs to be. A second big concern that a lot of technical teams might have about picking an A-B testing platform with a visual editor is compatibility. Now, let's be honest, every single website in the world is different. And the makeup of each website is going to be based on the programming language used, the frameworks it uses, the grid structure, the CSS and class naming conventions, and what have you. So my big tip here for anyone who's thinking about buying an A-B testing tool and that has a JavaScript powered website, you need to make sure that the selector process in the tool works with your site's HTML, because if it doesn't, your editors aren't going to be able to set up A-B tests easily. Okay, so let's see how this selection process works. Now, I'm in Optimize These Visual Editor, and you can see that as I'm moving my mouse around the screen, there's a big blue box. And then when I select on something on the left-hand side, that element gets selected. Now, the way this selection process works is through this thing at the top. And the way that the selector works in this example is you can see that we're selecting the element, which is a body, a div, a section, a form, and then the first button within this form. You can see that this one here is being selected. 
Now, in Optimizely, the way that this selection works, it's going to be based on your grid structure. However, Optimizely might also use a class or an ID here. Now, if you've got fiddly little HTML and CSS on your page, a handy little tip for editors is that you can see we've got this burger menu here. And if you click on this, you can get more specific around the exact elements that you want to pick. Now, it's probably worth pointing out that you don't need to run Optimizely to come up with the select for you. It is possible for you to manually add in class names and IDs here. So you can see I put in footer and I'm targeting this element, or it's possible for me to then add in an ID, say this one here. And then you can see that I've targeted this button here. However, for non-technical people, manually adding in your selectors here is not really feasible. Now, that selection process I showed you works perfectly for sites whose HTML and class names don't really change. However, a lot of sites out there will use things like CSS module or maybe Webpack, and the framework itself will determine the class names. So I've got a very simple example of this in action. So I've got an SPA here and I'm generating the class names based on a CSS module. And basically every single time I compile the site, the underlying framework is gonna figure out the class name to put in here. Now, if I jump to my website, you can see here I've done an inspect. And what this looks like in the real world is I've got my class and it's button underscore button underscore underscore UCKUZ. And then underneath that, I've got a second button, which is test button PU blah, blah, blah. Now, going back to my code, you can see that I haven't actually written this at all. And potentially, if I update some stuff here, this class name is going to change. Now, if you're watching this and your website is making use of a framework to automatically generate your class names, then my first tip is to keep this in mind when picking any A-B testing tool, because if you don't get the right support, it's really going to limit what your visual editors can do when they're setting up tests. Now, the way that we solve this dilemma within Optimizely Web is to make use of a new feature they've released called Dynamic Selector. So we can access this feature from Settings and then Advanced. Now, within Advanced, you can see we've got Enable Support for Dynamic Selectors. And from here, we can put the name in of a custom attribute. So this can be whatever you want to call it. I've called mine Data-Name. Now, if I jump back to my code here, you can see that I've added a custom attribute on this second button and it's called data-name and I've given it an individual ID. Now, if I jump back into Optimizely and I go back to my selector, you'll notice now that when I pick this element, you can see here that it's actually picked up that custom attribute. And if I click on this exact button here, we've got the selector based on where it positioned within the HTML, but this is using a bit of intelligence and it's basically saying if this custom attribute exists, use this. Otherwise, it would then use this positioning. Right. So let's quickly summarize everything before we part ways. So I think the key thing is that if you're thinking about A-B testing, but you have concerns, because you've got a JavaScript powered website, I'm hoping this video proves there's nothing to worry about. Now, I'll probably say the more important thing to consider is bucketing and targeting. And if you're picking a tool, you need to make sure that the tool you pick can do everything that I've covered in this video, because if you pick a tool and that doesn't work, then basically you're going to have to rely on your dev team to set up a bunch of A-B tests. And it basically means that you're not going to be as successful with A-B testing in your company as possible, because your marketers, your non-technical people, they're going to be stuck waiting for devs all the time. Now, we have got to the end of the video, and this isn't a typical type of video that I would record. Normally, I write videos and create videos for developers to teach them more about technical things. But if you do like videos on experimentation, let me know in the comments below. Now, the final thing you can do for me before we part ways is that if you have enjoyed this video, click on like and smash on the subscribe button. Basically, I release videos every single Sunday, many of which are on Optimizely. So if this is your jam, you know what to do. And then the final thing for me to say is that if you do like Optimizely and you're interested in experimentation, then on the screen right now is a video that I recorded about the six best latest features of Optimizely Web in 2024. I would check that out because there's some cool stuff there. Otherwise, until next Sunday, happy coding.